Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the square root of a complex number. Not a special one, an ordinary one, so I'm going to show you when the result isn't nice, what can you do, right? So if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you're into number theory and algebra problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, which is called Cyber Math. Cyber with an S. All right, let's get to work. So how do you find the square root of 2 plus i? Now, if we were given, like if the question was something like, how do you find the square root of 2i? That would be easy because you could say 1 plus i. How do we know that? Because when you square 1 plus i, you get 2i. You can check it out, right? And when I say the square root, of course, I'm talking about the principal square root so we can agree with the real numbers because real numbers have only one square root. By definition, the square root operation is supposed to give out a single answer, but complex numbers produce multiple answers. They are multi-valued. So we do need to be careful and we pick this one, which I think the one with a positive real part as the principal square root. Okay, great. So in other words, the argument is going to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. Okay. And on the circle, it's going to look like this. Okay. You're going to be in that region. And of course, if uh, the square root of 2i is 1 plus i, one of the square roots, then the other one is just going to be the opposite because if you square this number, you'll get the same thing as 1 plus i squared because they're opposites. Make sense? Okay. That rule also applies to complex numbers. But how do we find something like 2 plus i? Again, like let's say I had 2 plus i and I squared it, I would be getting 4 minus 1 plus 4i, which is 3 plus 4i. So if they asked us to find the square root of 3 plus 4i, there will be 2 plus i, the principal square root, and things will be super easy because these are nice numbers. But we don't have that case, so we're going to have to deal with some radicals. Let's do it. Okay, so to be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and set the square root of 2 plus i to a plus bi for two reasons. One is the name of this channel. That's the main reason, right? And two, it can solve the problem. Now we can go ahead and square both sides. Let's do it. Square and square and switch sides. Let's go ahead and write this first because that's a variable. By the way, a plus bi is a complex number. i squared is negative one if you're very new to complex numbers, but definitely go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made, I think, nine videos on basics of complex numbers. And a and B have to be real numbers in order for this to be well defined as a complex number. Now, when I square this, I'm going to get A squared, B squared, I squared, because I squared is negative 1. B squared, I squared is minus B squared. Be careful. That's the only difference. Plus 2A, B, I maybe memorize it because I did and it's not too hard. You can do it too. And that's equal to 2 plus I. Okay. Now, where do we go from here? To a system. Great. So complex numbers are two-dimensional. So usually when you're solving equations, you, even though you may have a single equation, you actually have two, two equations. You have more than one because of the two-dimensionality or multi-dimensionality. I just wanted to use that word. Now, how do we solve for A and B? This is the real part. That's the real part. So this is equal to two. That's equal to one because the coefficient of I on the right-hand side is one. That's the imaginary part. So this gives us the following system, a squared minus b squared is equal to 2, and a, b is equal to 1 half. How nice. We love solving systems, right? Don't you? Now, this system is actually fairly easy to solve. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go about it, let me tell you. One method is you can square a, b, and you'll get a squared, b squared equals 1 fourth. And then from the top equation, which I could call the first, I guess, you can isolate a squared and write it as b squared plus 2. And then the a squared in the second equation, the bottom one, you can replace with this. Make sense? And that would give you b squared times b squared plus 2 equals 1 fourth. And then you can set b squared to c, a lot of substitution. Hopefully you see what I see. And then you'll get c times c plus 2 equals 1 fourth. Make sure c is a real number because b is a real number and b squared is a real number. And then from here, you can solve for C. There are two solutions. Plug it back in, back substitute, find B, and then find A, and put it together. You'll get the answer. Ooh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of work, isn't it? You can do it that way, definitely. But I got a better idea. Can I show you that? Okay, let's go. Now, 
I have this system, I, a squared minus b squared equals 2, and ab equals 2, right? I'm going to use a super duper helpful identity. Do you know what it is? Let me show you. This identity is actually super helpful in algebra. And I just learned this when I kind of started teaching. And I then realized like, wow, this is really cool because a lot of times we're given problems at the competition and Olympiad levels that, you know, uses these identities, right? Something like a plus one over a, a minus one over a, things like that, right? For example, in this scenario, uh, if you had something like this, the difference would be just four. Isn't that amazing? I mean, just plug it in and go from there. Anyways, uh, we're just going to apply it to this scenario here, which is a squared and b squared. So let's go ahead and do it. If you square a squared plus b squared and a squared minus b squared and you subtracted them, you would get 4a squared b squared. Beautiful. Because we know what this is. This is 2 and this is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, right? And then we can just go from there, right? Okay, great. So ab is 2. Wait a minute. Is ab 2? No, no, no. ab is not 2. ab is 1 half. Come on. How can I change that hocus pocus, right? Real quick. Okay, let's fix that real quick. So AB is one half, correct? Yes, yes, yes. So A squared B squared is one fourth. So this is one. Great. So that's one. This is two squared, which is four. So from here, A squared plus B squared squared is five. You get that? Four plus one. I hope that makes sense. Sorry, I skipped a step. Normally, I try not to do it, but... Hopefully, you'll forgive me for that. And I, I know some people are going to be like, why do you show all the steps? Well, people need to see steps. If you don't want to see steps, then close your eyes. <laughs> okay, fine. From here, we get two solutions. We can safely say that a squared plus b squared is equal to plus minus root 5. I'm going to take each uh, one at a time. So I also know that uh, a squared minus b squared is equal to 2. So I'm going to take the positive one first. And then we can go ahead and add these up. And that gives us a squared equals root 5 plus 2 over 2. And b squared equals root 5 minus 2 over 2. These are valid solutions because a squared and b squared are both positive. They're supposed to be because they are real numbers. But if you go with a different scenario like a squared plus b squared is negative root 5, you realize that this is not possible for real numbers. So you can Im immediately discard it. Make sense? So these are the only options. But the million dollar question is, are the A values and B values positive? And the answer is yes. First, take both positive solutions and then you can kind of figure it out by looking at the original number. I'll show you in a little bit because if you, maybe right now, if you think about this number 2 plus i, it's basically going to be right here, right? This is 2, this is i, this is 2 plus i. So it's kind of like a vector. And notice that the angle is less than pi over 4. And when you square root this, the argument is going to be cut in half, even going to be smaller. Obviously, we're definitely in the first quadrant, right? Something like this. Because the length also going to be square root of that. Not necessarily half of it, but square root. Something like this. Anyways, you get the idea. We're in the first quadrant, so a and b are both positive. So we can kind of write a as the square root of this number and b as the square root of this number and put an i and you'll get the solution, not a. I should probably say this is z or even better, the square root of 2 plus i. If you don't believe that, you can go ahead and square it or use a calculator and verify the solution. You should definitely do that. And the other square root, because we were looking for the principal square root, the other one is just going to be the opposite of this. So you can put a minus sign here and minus sign here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.